the Old Time Gospel Hour, Program 536, regular version. From the auditorium of the Thomas Road Baptist Church in Lynchburg, Virginia, the Faith Partners and Friends present Jerry Falwell and the Old Time Gospel Hour, celebrating over 25 years of Christian ministry. and you may be seated. And thank you, Jim Moon. Today I'm speaking from Proverbs chapter 29. It hardly seems possible that we have come now through 28 chapters of the 31 chapters of the Proverbs. Today, next week, and the following week, we conclude the entire book of Proverbs, all 31 chapters, written by Solomon under divine inspiration, to instruct everyone on how to live successfully. God wants you to be happy. He wants you to be successful. He wants you to be a blessing to others. He wants you to live a life of fruitfulness. And today, I'm speaking on learning to be a good listener, becoming a good listener. That is the lesson of Proverbs chapter 29. You know, one of the most marvelous privileges we have with our faith partners, who, by the way, make this ministry possible, is the privilege of praying one for another. The Old Time Gospel Hour comes on the air every week on about 400 television stations uh, with the word brought to you, words brought to you by the faith partners. And those words are right on the screen, faith partners. Our program after an hour closes with an expression of appreciation to the faith partners. Those are the people, thousands of them, who pray for us and who make this television radio ministry available and possible for people everywhere. We thank God for the faith partners. Once a month, I write a letter to our faith partners, and in that, we send them a little prayer request form that looks just like this. It's faith partner prayer request. And what we ask our faith partners to do is write down the prayer request you have, whatever they are, and send them to us here in Lynchburg because we would like to have the privilege of praying for you by need, by name. You know, when you send prayer requests to us as a faith partner, we actually pass those prayer requests out one by one to our people everywhere. I have... Uh, this is an envelope that we, we on Wednesdays and Sundays give to our people at Thomas Road. And they take them home and actually pray for you by name and by need. Here's my packet for this week. And uh, here's one from a prayer request from Monticello, Kentucky, in which the writer says, Please pray for me. I am taking care of my invalid husband and sister. Pray that I will be able to stay well enough to carry on in the care of my family. That's a very real prayer request. I'll be praying for that need. Others are praying for the needs of others who come uh, request mail to us by the thousands each week. Uh, here's one from Pottsville, Pennsylvania, who says, last year I asked that you pray for, uh, uh, for us as a large amount of income had been removed from us at my husband's place of employment. Since then, the Lord has provided a part-time job to improve our financial situation. I wish that you now join me in thankful prayer for his goodness. A request had come earlier asking for prayer in that respect. And this prayer request comes to us from a faith partner in his 80s in, I think this is pronounced Cloquet, Minnesota, C-L-O-Q-U-E-T. Anybody know how that's pronounced? Cloquet, Minnesota? Well, it's somewhere in between there. It's in Minnesota. I got that one. And... Uh, 
he says, he's in his 80s, he says, please pray for my wife. Some time ago, she fell down the basement stairs and broke her hip. I thank the Lord she was not injured more seriously. However, because she's up in years, the doctor says the break will take longer to heal. She's almost 85. Will you pray with me for her full recovery and that she will not have to use a walker? Thank you. These are the kinds of prayer requests that come to us by the thousands. And what a privilege to pray one-on-one -on -one for these prayer requests. This one from Columbus, Ohio, from one of our faith partners, who says, My wife was recently tragically killed in an auto accident. Now I must assume the role of both a father and a mother for my precious one-year-old baby daughter. Please pray for me. Now that's a very critical need. And here's a daddy reaching out saying, Please pray uh, for me. You know, that's a great privilege for us to be able to put those prayer requests in packets like this and pass them out to our people, and they get a great blessing at home. I wonder how many of you in this audience, I'd I just like to ask you, how many of you at one time or another have taken one of our prayer packets home and have prayed for requests that have come to us? Uh, would you stand, please? Rather than raise your hands, would you just stand? Those who have prayed at one time or another for these prayer requests, I wish that, uh, Bruce, I think you're doing it already, Bruce Braun, our producer director. I want the people at home to see that there's an army of prayer warriors here in the choir, in the congregation who pray by name, by need. All I'm asking, thank you and be seated. All I'm asking is, faith partners, don't ever hesitate to fill in that prayer request form that I'll mail you once a month and mail it back to us. This is a very small thing that we can do in obedience to Scripture and as our way of saying thank you for helping us preach the gospel of Christ to multitudes. Right now, the old-time gospel, our choir, joined by the Sounds of Liberty, led by David Randlett, singing uh, resurrection song. the Resurrection Song. Thank you, young people. Thank you, choir. And a few young people in the choir. Yes. A few. We're talking about the faith partners allowing us the privilege of praying for them. They also pray for us. This ministry is what it is because 
of that reciprocal arrangement of thousands of faith partners. That's why this month we're asking God, and in these one or two months, we're asking God to give us 150,000 faith partners that we can know these people are praying for us every day and they in turn can know we are praying for them. Thank God for our faith partners. You know, when we talk about the faith partners keeping this television radio ministry on 400 TV stations approximately and about 500 radio stations every day, uh, I would like to say that it's just not a matter of filling up space on the air. We get over 30,000 letters a year from people who say, I received Christ as my Lord and my Savior through watching one of your programs or listening to one of your broadcasts. And every faith partner is just what the word implies, a partner in that soul winning effort. I was reading some prayer requests. I have a few letters that uh, Tim Pearson picked out for me uh, from people who came to know the Lord as a result of our television radio ministry. This one comes from West Fork, Arkansas. Dear Jerry, I'm writing to tell you that my daughter and son-in-law were saved this week through watching your television program. That's about seven months ago, he was severely injured on the job and was confined to home. While recuperating, he would watch the old time gospel hour with my daughter. I think more out of curiosity than anything else. However, as soon as the program was over, they went to their bedroom, knelt down, and asked the Lord to save them. Their family is so different now, and thank God for the old time gospel hour. That's West Fork, Arkansas. Here's one from Cedar Lake, Indiana. Dear Jerry, I have a wonderful story to tell you. Because of the old time gospel hour, most of my family has now accepted Christ as their savior. My husband Charles and I, our son Charlie and his wife, and our son Bill and his wife have all accepted the Lord Jesus. And now it looks as though our oldest son Chris is very near to accepting the Lord as well. We thank God for your dedication and in trying to reach those who are not saved. We attended a church for 30 years where we never heard the message of salvation until we tuned into the old time gospel hour. May God bless you and keep you so that you can, you can continue doing this work for him. And I might add, every faith partner along the line had a part in that. From Fullerton, California, dear Jerry, my wife and I uh, began listening to you over a year ago, and although we were not Christians at that time, we liked what we were seeing and hearing. God began to convict our hearts of our need for the Lord, but we were not able to make the commitment. And then early one morning, one of your coworkers, Reverend J. O. Grooms, called and talked with us by telephone about receiving Christ as our personal Savior and Lord. We prayed to receive Christ that morning and have been, li been living for him ever since. We subsequently became faith partners to help spread the gospel message. I wear my Jesus first pen every day to work. It constantly brings opportunities to testify for Christ. May God continue to bless you in your ministry. And finally, one from Whateley, Massachusetts. Dear Jerry, I've been watching the old time gospel hour for some time. But recently, my 19-year-old daughter started watching with me. Since then, she has met a young man who has led her to Christ, and we're all attending a local church about 20 miles from home here in Whateley. Last night, the youth group of the church was in charge of the evening service. Six young people gave their testimonies. At the end of the service, the youth did as you do every Sunday. They asked people to invite the Lord into their hearts and to be born again. This morning at breakfast, my daughter and I were talking about the service when our 11-year-old told us she had invited the Lord into her heart last night at the youth service. We learned this from watching Old Time Gospel Hour. We thank God for what is going on everywhere. As far as I'm concerned, you know, that's what it's all about, uh, getting people saved. And I just want to say thank you to every faith partner who is helping us do this. I just want to stop long enough to say we couldn't do it without you. And you think, no doubt, that your $10 a month or whatever you give and your prayers are not significant. But they are very significant, and we don't take you for granted. We have a very special group visiting with us today from New Hampshire. I just read one there from Massachusetts, a letter. We have a fine group of young people from Hawthorne College in, uh, I'm not sure of the town. What is it, Coach? Antrim, New Hampshire which is not far from Concord, where I have preached. I wish the basketball team from Hawthorne College would stand, please. And um, when you get back home, everybody will know where you were. God bless you. Good to have you. Thank you. If you'll be seated. Coach, I want you to come up here a minute. This won't cost you anything. 
Now, the team back there is really having a ball seeing you on, on the, under the spotlight, Coach. You usually got them under the spotlight. But here's a great young man. Actually, it was Liberty Baptist team that had us on the spotlight <laughs> last night. <laughs> now, I didn't bring that up. All right. <laughs> this is John, let me pronounce it right, Hortnaby. Correct. W-H-A-R-T-N-A-B-Y. Correct. And that's good. John uh, is head coach for this fine basketball team, and I'm not going to get into the basketball game because that's not the important thing. The important thing of what happened last night was after the game, coach came up and spoke to me in the stands and uh, said, you know, when I learned that you were on our schedule, I decided to see what we're getting into down there, so I started watching your program about two months ago, the Old Time Gospel Hour up in New Hampshire. And, um, and we chatted a while, and my wife and the bros, and when he went back down the floor, but as I was about to leave, he walked up and said, could I see you privately for a moment? Coach, why don't you tell them what you asked me? I asked the, uh, you to help me to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior. <laughs> I feel that uh, we came down here to play basketball. We did not win the game, but we won more than that. Amen. Amen. This guy. <laughs> Amen. This is John's first public testimony, and unlike most of you when you got saved, he got to tell the whole world at one time <laughs> that he trusted Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And John, I want to do something for you. All the faith partners know what this is. It's the faith partner Bible that uh, I want you to have. I'll inscribe it after the service, but this is from Jerry to John in Christian love. And we're going to mail one to every member of the team, by the way. I didn't have enough here this morning, but all of you guys will get one. And God bless you in your new life in Christ. Thank you very God much. Bless you, John. God bless you, Yes, sir. God's at work in our country. And if you think the gospel of Jesus Christ is not effective, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, I was studying engineering, fellows. I was a second-year student in college, didn't own a Bible. My dad was never in a church in his life, his father before him likewise. But through hearing a radio broadcast, I became aware of my need for Christ, much like you did, John. And, and as a result of that, I began looking for a church that preached what Dr. Fuller, the radio preacher, uh, declared. And January 20, 1952, before most of you were born, I did just what you did last night, John. I invited Jesus Christ into my heart, and nothing has been the same since. And that's going to be the case, of course, with you as with everyone who knows the Lord. And I just wanted to say to you, again, faith partners, because you put the program in New Hampshire, John heard it. And John's a member of the family of God. So if you wonder if it's worth it or not, the preaching of the gospel, even though it's expensive, it's worth it. Keep praying for us. Right now, Mac Evans is coming to sing for us. I don't know what you're singing, Mac. I'm sure, I hope you do, but uh, <laughs> this uh, Mac Evans is a traveling musical ambassador, and he has a wonderful wife. She's the, one of the greatest cooks in the world, and occasionally he allows her to invite us, our family, over to eat with them, and that is why I have a weight problem. Mrs. Mac Evans. This is Mr. Mac Evans. I saw a little boy one day no shiny toys with which to play. His clothes were all tattered and old. You see, his dad was gone and mom was seldom there. And he had no one to really love and care. And I looked at that little fella and thought for a moment. But for Calvary, fallen girl or a drunken man or a child without a guiding hand but for Calvary there oh I 
I walked on a little farther, and there I saw a man lying in a door, and there beside him lay an empty bottle on the floor. He was lying there unaware of the cold and the chill of the morning air. You see, his hopes and dreams had long since gone, and a lonely, empty, aimless life lingered on. And I looked at that poor fellow and thought, oh, but for Calvary, there go I. And Christians today, there's many souls that are far astray, blindly led by Satan's sway, groping deep in the pathways of sin and despair with no hope of life to gain they're filled with sorrow grief and pain oh but for calvary That fallen girl and that poor drunken man and that little child without someone to love him without a guiding hand all oh, today but for Calvary thank God for Calvary but for Thank you, Mike Evans. You just met a young basketball coach from a college in New Hampshire who trusted Christ as his savior last night because faith partners helped get the gospel to him first by television. And I've read to you some letters, these letters, telling of many who trusted the Lord as savior and who've written to us. We have thousands of letters every year like that. But right now I'm coming down where you live. I need 150,000 faith partners. The cost of television and, air, uh, and radio airtime is phenomenal. Millions of dollars every year. And with God's help, I've got to find some faith partners who will help me with a monthly gift and regular prayers to keep this program on this station and 400 television stations like this one and 500 radio stations. Faith partners are the people who do that. Will you go to your telephone right now and pick up that phone and tell the Liberty Baptist College student who answers, we pay for the phone call, by the way, or one of our staff members, say, I want to be a faith partner with Jerry. I want to become his partner. I want to help him keep the gospel coming out on my station so that my loved ones can hear the saving gospel of Christ. And like that young coach, some of my loved ones get saved this year. Now, I need your help. You know, we, we have faith partners who give $20 a month and $25 a month. Not everybody can do that, but almost everybody can give $10 a month. Could you afford to invest $10 a month for the next 12 months in this television radio ministry? Could you make that sacrifice to help me get the gospel to people who live in your area, who watch this channel, who may be watching it right now? Will you become a faith partner and help me keep this program on this station with your $10 a month gift? Now, if you can give 15 or 20 or 25, do it. But if you can only give 10, thousands of our faith partners give only $10 a month. Would you come in and join right now as a faith partner, a member of the team that's helping me do it? Under God, please pick up the phone and call right now and make your pledge. We pay for the phone call. Now, as soon as I get your phone call, I'll mail you this beautiful Bible. This simulated leather, soft bound, giant print faith partner Bible is just that. No one but faith partners has it. I said that it's soft bound. We've never sent out a faith partner Bible that's soft bound before, but this one, simulated leather. I said that it's giant print. Perhaps you can see that right where you are there. 
giant print so that if you have difficulty reading small Bible print as I do, you've got something special here. The words of our Lord are in red. And uh, the concordance and the Bible study helps and the, and the, and the maps and all that, that kind of thing in uh, the back of the Bible will help the Bible come alive for you. This Faith Partner Bible, this study Bible, is for Faith Partners only. I'll ship it to you today. You should have it in days by UPS right to your door. Number two, if you call me today and make your pledge, I'll send you in this beautiful little jewelry box something that you'll be glad that you have. Inside are two 24-carat gold-plated Jesus First lapel pens, two of them. Now, only faith partners wear the gold-plated pen, like I'm wearing. When I meet you out there and see that gold-plated pen on you, I know you are a faith partner. And we'll send you two of them. We've never done that before. We've always sent out one. We're sending out two now for the husband and wife, for you and your loved one. And we'd like you to call, and we'll ship those immediately right along with the Bible. I'll also begin sending you a newsletter entitled, For Faith Partners Only, four pages once a month, Bible studies and questions and answers and things about the Word of God that you'd like to know, information about the ministry. Just an inside private, confidential report from me to you for faith partners only. And then once a month, I'll write you a letter. And inside that letter, there'll be a personal letter from me. In addition to that, there'll be a prayer request form. I showed it to you early in the program in the which you'll send your prayer request back to me and I'll be praying for you. And our prayer partners will pray for you by name, by need, we'll answer you. And, and God will, and he does, answer prayer. We'll be praying one for another. That is the faith partner arrangement that I'm asking you to become a part of. Now, we pay for the phone call. The number is on the screen, 1-800-446-5000. I need your call right now. I want you to join our team and help me win thousands of John Whartnabys and coaches and young men and young women and mothers and daddies and children and grandparents out there to, to the saving knowledge of Christ. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Will you help me preach the gospel to America, Australia, Canada, the Philippines, the islands of the seas this year by giving $10 a month? Make your pledge. If you can give 15 or 20 or 25 a month, do it. But for the next 12 months, if you can only give $10 a month, do that. Become a member of the team. Pick up your phone right now and call me. We pay for the phone call. Absolutely a free call. Make your pledge. I'll write you a letter immediately. I'll send you the Bible. I'll send you the gold-plated Jesus first pens. I'll begin writing you once a month. And we'll join hands to get the gospel out to everybody everywhere, and especially your loved ones where you live, and your $10 a month or more will help me do it. Call me, 1-800-446-5000. If you live in Hawaii, Alaska, or Canada, that number won't work. You must write me, Jerry Falwell, Lynchburg, Virginia, to become a faith partner and make your pledge. Or Box 505, Richmond Hill, Ontario. Whether calling or writing, please do it right now. Just before Don Norman joins the Sounds of Liberty, and then we afterwards go into Proverbs 29, I want to introduce another group of friends who are here, our field representatives. I don't know exactly where they are, but uh, we'll introduce them by name first of all, and then have them all stand as a group. Joe Beck is one of our field representatives and one of my assistants out on the field. He serves the area called California, a little subsidiary of Virginia out on the West Coast. And Bruce Jackson in New York and Glenn Jackson in New York, Ralph Polston, Indiana. Gary, is this Chisamore in uh, Texas? Duran Davis in Georgia, Glenn Kopp in Florida, Haywood Moore in Tennessee, Stan Williamson, Pennsylvania. Hope you're all together. Would you stand, please? Are all together? Let's give them a hand. They've come in to be with us for these days. All right. God bless. Thank you. And now, Don Norman, the ancient, in the midst of these young people, the sounds of liberty from Liberty Baptist College. How 
Can I say thanks for the things that you've done for me? Things so undeserved that you give to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am, I ever hope to be. Proverbs chapter 29. What an exciting 29 weeks this has been as we have been teaching and preaching through the book of Proverbs. While you're turning there, I would like to say a word to college professors everywhere. Liberty Baptist College and Seminary are in need of trained, qualified, Men and women with your earned doctorates <clears throat> from accredited schools who love the Lord or who are in agreement with us on our doctrinal and behavioral positions, who would like to be a part of the fastest growing such school in the world today, I would recommend that uh, you write the office of the president, Liberty Baptist College Lynchburg, and uh, simply say I'm available. At least I'm interested in an interview. The president, Dr. Gilliman, will send you the information you need. 
We have openings in almost all of our various major areas. And we would like to say that we want the Lord to send us His choices for every position. We also would like to say to young people everywhere, high school juniors and seniors, three or four times a year here at Liberty, we have what we call college for a weekend. We invite high school juniors and seniors to come here for three or four days, attend classes, live in the dormitories with our LBC students, attend chapel services and uh, athletic events and church services at Thomas Road, and decide, is Liberty Baptist College for me? The next dates for college for a weekend are in February and April. February and April. Not that far away. And the dates are on the screen. And if you would like to have a college for a weekend brochure, just call our toll-free number and uh, pick up the phone right now and call us. We'll mail it right to you. And 1-800-446-5000. Uh, we pay for the call. Ask for college for a weekend material. I'd just like to say whether you can come to college for a weekend or not, young people, we'd love to have you here as a student. We are not, I emphasize, we are not increasing any of our fees for the 83-84 school year. There are not many schools in the nation doing that, but we don't want to limit young people uh, from coming here who really sincerely want to train to serve God. We're a liberal arts school with majors in 42 areas, and we'd simply say, uh, give us a chance. Call us on the toll-free number and ask for the catalog and the information. We'll take care of that. If you happen to be one of those smart young men or young ladies, you're graduating number one or number two in your senior class, valedictorian or salutatorian, you can come free to Liberty. The first year, tuition free, worth $2,000 to you. That's called the Chancellor's Scholarship. When you call the toll-free number, just ask for Chancellor's Scholarship information. Or if you happen to be the son or daughter of a full-time pastor, a full-time associate pastor, missionary, evangelist, that's the President's Scholarship. You can also come tuition-free the first year and ask for information on the President's Scholarship. Let's read verses 1 through 27, Proverbs chapter 29. That's page 1006 in the Faith Partner Study Bible. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed in that without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. The king by judgment establisheth the land. But he that receiveth gifts or bribes overthroweth it. A man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man there is a snare, but the righteous doth sing and rejoice. The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The bloodthirsty hate the upright, but the just seek his soul. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterward. If a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and the deceitful man meet together. The Lord lighteneth both their eyes. The king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother's shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words, for though he understand, he will not answer. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than of him. He that delicately bringeth up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirreth up strife, and a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with a thief hateth his own soul. He heareth cursing, and bereath it not. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment cometh from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in his way is abomination to the wicked. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, 
Help us today as we look into this 29th chapter of the Proverbs to learn how to become good listeners, good learners. I pray that you will infuse into us divine understanding and help us to hear something today to make us live more like you would have us to live and less like the way we've lived in the past. In Jesus' name, amen. My topic for the 29th chapter of Proverbs is becoming a good listener. The text verse is verse 1. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. That is, the man, the woman, who has been warned and rebuked often, but disregards all advice and counsel, will finally self-destruct. And then the two key verses of the chapter are verses 18 and 25. Verse 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. When a man loses vision, when he loses hope, when he loses challenge in life, he's finished. And verse 25, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. God teaches us we're to fear no one but him. We're not to fear men, we're to fear God and God only. And so we have these two key verses, one regarding the matter of the necessity of a vision in life. You need to have goals. You need to have a vision. You need to have in your heart a burning desire to please God, to be successful in life and to honor Him. And secondly, you must never be afraid of men. You should fear God only. Now let's talk about what Solomon is talking about, becoming a good listener. Point one in the message Civil authority, listening to civil authority. Verses 2, 4, 12, and 14. In verse 2, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. We are, as Christians, responsible to government. We cannot live as freelancers as we please, but rather we have an obligation as a child of God to obey the powers that be, Romans chapter, uh, chapter 13. The only time we have the right to disobey, uh, disobey civil government is when civil law requires that we disobey God's law. In the New Testament, the early disciples put it this way, when they were ordered not to preach the gospel anymore and God had told them to preach the gospel, they said it is better that we obey God rather than men. Now, in this country, thank God, there are very few times and places where the laws of man require that we disobey God. I'm glad that we live in such a country. But nevertheless, we can be grateful that for the main part in government in this country, in civil government, there is a respect for morality and decency and civil rights and a respect for the Bible and the principles of the Word of God. In most cases, we have some bad laws, but I'm glad that in this country we have uh, legal ways in which those laws can be changed and we can operate within that system to do it. I was very saddened when I heard that the Ku Klux Klan, a hate organization, was going to demonstrate and march in Washington, D.C. There was no question, although they have the right to do it, there was no question that that kind of thing would ultimately cause bloodshed. And uh, we clearly are told to live peaceably with all men. Uh, the Ku Klux Klan, the, the Communist Party, and uh, uh, the Nazi Party in this country, those hate organizations uh, are very dangerous, and we understand all of that. Uh, someone asked me, what would you have done? Did the riot that erupted in the police, the, the police department, the recipients of things they were not responsible for, and the looting and the stoning, I would say to those who reacted that way, you were just as bad as uh, the Ku Klux Klaners who came there out of hate. You had no right to throw stones at anybody and break windows in and steal. The best way to handle, the best way to handle the hate mongers is to ignore them. Their day is past. Regardless what the Nazis and the Ku Klux Klaners think, their day is past. They will never have another day in this country. I'm convinced that is so. And because that is so, we don't need to fight fire with fire and, and do all the bad things they do in, in response to them. The Christian says, when the, the Bible says for Christians, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. We're to be, 
We're to be committed Christians and obedient citizens. And in verses 4 and 12 and 14, there's an enlargement. The king by judgment establisheth the land. That is, when a king is just, he creates stability. And our country, with all of our problems, thank God, for 200 years plus, has been the most stable society in the world. There's no question that's true. You see these aberrations, these outbreaks, and back in the 60s and 70s, campuses on fire. But when you look at over 200 years of our history, uh, there is no nation on earth that has enjoyed more stability and peace than we have within our own shores, and we ought to thank God for it. Uh, we are always complaining about our problems. We do have an economic problem in this country. But did you know that our poverty is wealth by the standards of most other nations? You know, I was just talking to a, one of our cameramen back here, uh, Leo Cawthorn. He operates the camera that Sue Wilmington, our interpreter to the deaf, is using in, the, in a back studio here. And Leo said, well, our plant has shut down and won't open now for another month or two. But he said, I'm not complaining. God's been good to me. I'm not complaining. God's been good to me. He's got a wife and children. He's not belly aching. He'll go out and do some other work and freelance. He may have to draw on employment, whatever. He's out of work, but he's not angry with God or angry with his country. Uh, he has been a good Christian and a good citizen, and he says, God's been good to me. I have no complaints. And if you would go to, with me to Haiti the next time I go, or to Cambodia, or Thailand, or Somalia, or Bangladesh, and see little children who don't have milk to drink, and see families starving, I was at a mass burial in Thailand. About 50 had starved to death that day, and they brought the bodies together. We filmed it, but we never showed it on the air, obviously. They brought the bodies together and tossed them into the back of a truck, took the dump truck out to a ravine, and ra raised the body and dumped those 50 or so bodies into a ravine, and then a bulldozer comes and covers them up. If you could see all of that, and the fact that half the world went to bed hungry last night. You'd thank God for all that you have, and you'd stop your belly aching and complaining, and you'd become not just a good Christian, but a good citizen. Verse 12, if a ruler hearken to lies, all his servants are wicked. That means a wicked ruler usually has wicked aides and assistants around him, cronies. And uh, verse 14, the king that faithfully judgeth the poor, his throne shall be established forever. If you want to be a good political leader, and I su suspect I'm talking to some congressmen now, I suspect I'm talking to some governors and leaders, maybe in other countries, some heads of state. If you want to be a good leader, you have a sensitive and compassionate heart for the people in your society who are hurting. And don't be thinking how you can exploit them. Rather, be thinking what can we do for them to help them out of their indigence back into productive labor and activity and self-respect. Secondly, listening to family authority. Verse 3, Whoso loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father, but he that keepeth company with harlots or prostitutes spendeth his substance. Not only are we as Christians told by Solomon under divine inspiration to obey civil authority, we are to listen to family authority. What is the family authority? Now this, this is absolutely devastating to the feminist of our day. And it's so hard to say it in a way that the feminists do not twist it and make it to be something that it is not. God has never called the husband in the family to be a dictator. God has never caused the husband, called the husband even to be a boss. But God has, and the scriptures clearly teach this, given to the husband and the father in the family the responsibility of spiritual leadership. He is to be the fountainhead in that home who gives guidance and spiritual direction to the family. Most of the most aggressive feminist leaders married a little two-by-four fellow back yonder somewhere who had to have permission to put on his britches and who didn't take a stand, and the family was a failure, and so as a result, they're bitter towards all men. Well, there's nothing more wonderful than a godly husband who loves his wife and loves his children and who believes that he has a lifetime commitment to them and who does not dictate to them, but, but who by example sets before them a model. 
We have a little plaque on my dresser in my bedroom that my wife and I purchased from someone here at the high school fair the other night. It says, children need models more than they need critics. That's a good saying. And that's what a husband, he's, he's supposed to be a model, an example, a testimony, a spiritual leader. And in our family, my wife and I are partners. I've never looked on myself as the boss of my wife. I've looked uh, that on the fact that my wife and I are one. We're partners. We became one flesh in marriage. How could I happily do anything that displeases her, and how could she happily do anything that displeases me? We have agreement. I can't think of anything of significance that either and I has, uh, has ever done without agreement on both sides. And we always try to bring our children into it. Family authority is spiritual. And by the way, husbands, let me talk to you a little bit too. I've been giving the wives the dickens here. A lot of you don't have the respect of your family because you haven't earned it. Uh, when you come home, you don't have time to listen to them. When you do get home, you have lit. You've stopped by the bar on the way. And all they know of you is somebody who's given your best to your job and your worst to them. They'd like to see you come on one time bright and alive and not complaining and belly aching, but, but uh, exuding confidence and, and enthusiasm and love and joy. And if you will do that and you would set the example for your family, you might find your wife and children happily following and emulating your example. So family authority is important. Are young people supposed to obey their parents? Absolutely. What a tragic thing today that we, we, the psychologists and sociologists are advocating rebellion on the part of children. Do your own thing. The scripture clearly teaches, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And that means that mom and dad are your bosses. What mom and dad says is the law. You say, well, mom and dad are not always right. No, but they're always in charge. And if you want to have long days upon this earth, the promise of Ephesians 6 is, uh, honor, respect, love your parents, that your days may be long upon the earth that the Lord thy God giveth thee. God has made this the first commandment with promise. If you honor and respect your parents, God will extend your days. And if you want to shorten your days, disrespect your parents. You say, my dad is not even a Christian. He's still your dad. And the best way to win your dad to the Lord is let him see a submissive Christian child a son or a daughter who is obedient to authority. Well, suppose my daddy tells me to do something that's wrong. Now, does he really ever do that? Or does he just tell you to do something that might take a little elbow grease to do it? It might require a little work and a little responsibility. Again, it's a matter of listening to family authority. Finally, point three, listen to spiritual authority. Every one of us is under civil authority, we're under family authority, and we're under spiritual authority. Verse 13, verse 25, and verse 26. Verse 13 says, the poor and the deceitful man meet together. That's the poor and the rich. The true rendering is the rich. The poor and the rich man meet together, and the Lord lighteneth both their eyes. That means that God gives wisdom to the rich and the poor. Your life can be successful only, no matter what your station in life, only if you're getting wisdom from the Lord. And verse 25, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. We have a God, if we trust him, who will make us safe. So our theme today, becoming a good listener, listening to civil authority, listening to family authority, listening to spiritual authority. And if you will practice that, Life will be worth living for you. That's the regulated and yet the free life so in submission to the Lordship of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us bow our heads in prayer. How many here will say, Jerry, there was a time and a place in my life when I believed that Christ died for me, was buried for me, rose from the dead for me. I believe that he did all that for me, and I remember a time and a place when in a simple childlike way, I invited Jesus Christ into my heart. Would you raise your hand high if you've done that? God bless every one of you. Thank you. Take them down. No one else knows whether your hand was raised except you and God. I didn't do that to embarrass you. I did that to help you locate you. If you couldn't lift your hand because you don't know for sure that you've been born again, 
But sometime, someday, somewhere, someplace, you'd like to become a Christian. And you'll say, Jerry, pray for me. I'd like to be prayed for. Just slip your hand up for a moment, please, upstairs and down. God bless every one of you. Just lift them up. All. God bless every one of you. God bless you. God bless you. In the back and upstairs and down here. God bless you on the aisle. How many will say, Jerry, I am a Christian, but my life isn't what it ought to be, and I know it and God knows it. Pray for me. Raise your hand. Thank you. Take them down. With our heads bowed. There by the television set or there sitting in the pew. If you're not a Christian, would you bow with me and just pray this prayer from your heart and mean it. Oh God, I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. But right now, I trust Jesus as my Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save my soul. While our heads are bowed, there by the television set, if you prayed that prayer in a minute, just write me and I'll send you a free copy of my booklet, How to Get Started Right. The same material we'll give those who walk the aisles here at this church in a few moments. If you still have questions about your salvation, give me your phone number. We'll call you at our expense and help you. If you have a prayer request, just give me that uh, prayer request. We'll pray for you by name, by need, write you personally. If you want counseling, there's a 24-hour prayer hotline. And if you're deaf, we also have a TTY line for the deaf. Let us help you. Let us stand to pray. Father in heaven, help men and women and boys and girls here and throughout the television audience who need a Savior, who need to be born again, to believe on Jesus, to trust the Savior right now. Don't let anybody die and go to hell who heard this message today, but may your word be blessed and applied by your Spirit to every heart. In Jesus' name, amen. While our heads are still bowed, our eyes are still closed, our pastors are here at the front, I'd like to ask those of you in the balcony, on the main floor who raised your hand, many of you raised your hands for prayer, if you were sincere about it. When we begin singing, I want you to step out upstairs and come down the stairwells and down these aisles and meet these pastors and go to a private prayer room where they will open the Bible or someone will open the Bible and lead you to Christ. You can leave here today saved for sure, forever, a member of the family of God. And if you're on the main floor, just step out to the nearest aisle and come down here. I'm not asking you to join this church or join anything. I'm asking you to become a Christian, to receive Christ as your Savior, as many watching my television have just done. While our heads are bowed now, while the choir is singing, will you come and meet the pastors here at the front? Come on. Just step out and come right here. Meet us at the front. Amen. Amen. God bless you, man. Thank you for watching this Old Time Gospel Hour program. Now, more than ever, we need friends who will stand behind this ministry and join that core group of people we call Faith Partners. To become a Faith Partner, simply call this toll-free number, 1-800-446-5000 or write to Jerry Falwell, Lynchburg, Virginia, 24514 to show you our appreciation. We'll send you this beautiful new soft cover Faith Partner Bible. You'll also receive two of these gold-plated Jesus First pins. For Faith Partners only is a monthly Bible study newsletter to help you grow in the knowledge and love of God's Word. So become a Faith Partner today. Again, that toll-free number is 1-800-446-5000. Now, this is John Corrigan. May God richly bless you is our prayer. This has been a presentation of the Liberty Broadcasting System.